Let's sing a song, amen. God is so good. Would you stand with me if you know it? God is so good. Is he good to you? God is so good. He's so good to you. Come on, Miss Sandy, help me out. What's that second verse now? Do you all really believe that? Yeah, kind of weak over here on this side, amen. Y'all even Baptist, amen. Uh, amen, praise God. Uh, do y'all worship God over here? Y'all just pretend y'all's Baptist, amen. Uh, amen, help me with the third verse, amen. He, amen. Uh, Seed, amen. We're going to do tag teaming since uh, the young man before preached on church discipline. Uh, I'm going to do what they did in the Old Testament. Uh, on Sunday nights at my church, we've been preaching the book of Psalms, and this one kind of stuck out, so I, I preach it everywhere I go. I try not to go to too many meetings. Brother Jeff invited me to come, and I try to stay home now, and it's not, uh, I'm a pastor, I'm not an evangelist, now, but Brother Terrell's an evangelist, amen, you want a good evangelist, go see him, amen, he's from Texas, hallelujah, amen, you want evangelist, see Ronnie, amen, hallelujah, he can eat, amen, uh, just don't feed him chicken, amen, uh, somebody say amen right there, hallelujah, amen. But I've uh, been staying home for the last three months. First ten weeks we had uh, one person get saved every week for ten weeks. We didn't even know he was in revival. But we was in revival, amen. And then my dad, 82 years old, uh, he stopped taking his medication. They put a pacemaker on and my daughter took my hot rod, and I got a Challenger, and if you don't like it, too bad, amen, and we drove 120 miles to get him to the hospital because he couldn't even breathe, couldn't, I mean, he's passed out in the car. I said, go around that one, bump that one if you have to. I said, bump it! Mm, that's my daddy! See, some of you, amen, got people going to hell, but you ain't willing to Drive 120 miles an hour. Amen. You ain't going to do everything you can. We ran the side of the roads. We passed lights. We ran past cars. Amen. Yeah. We did everything we could. Sure. You stand before heaven, they're going to be able to say that about you, about your loved ones, about your friends. By your neighbors, you did everything you could. Is that what they're going to say? Is that what God's going to say? Oh, it got awful quiet for a Sunday night. Man, I thought we was in camp meeting. Amen. What happened to the shouting? Amen. Uh, amen. I ain't seen no shouting yet. See, the legalists, they're way over here. They squeaky clean. I hate to put you in the squeaky clean plea yard, amen, but y'all just happen to be over here, amen. So here, here you are, squeaky clean, amen. And you got all the rules and regulations, do this, don't do that, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Then you got the other Baptist way over here. I hate to put you over here, Brother Terrell, but you're sitting over here, amen. And these are the uh, legalists. And as long as we're filled with the Spirit of God, we can do anything we want. Am I right? Amen? We're supposed to be in the middle. 
Amen. I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell you what will solve most of our problems. If you get filled with the Holy Ghost, amen, you won't have to ask, do I need a haircut? Do I need to quit this? Do I need to do that? Amen. Can I have liberty to do this? Can I have liberty to do that? God will speak to you. God will tell you what you can do, what you can't do. Amen. And if you got a question and, and you can't get an answer from God, he gave you a pasture, amen, that'll tell you, amen. We don't do that around here. Oh, that's okay. Amen. Which one are you? Maybe you're one of them stuffy Baptists. I noticed there wasn't much praise. I didn't see no worship but hands come up. Did you notice that? You don't mind me, amen, saying the truth. You know, I really, like I said, I am not looking for a meeting, so, you know, hallelujah, amen. Brother Jeff is now, amen. He's a good man. He can sing and preach and hallelujah. Have him in your church. But uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. Y'all dead. You dead. You couldn't raise your hand. You, you, there was no tears. Amen. God is so good. And you went, oh, I done heard that before. You know, what you need is a spiritual cleansing. Amen. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The problem is that we leak. That's why we have these meetings. We have these meetings so that you can get filled again so by the end of the week you can stand up and when we sing God is so good, amen, the tears that come out, your hand will be up in the air, you'll be saying, Lord, thank you for saving me. Uh, God, thank you for my salvation. Thank you for my maid. Thank you, uh, Lord, for all the good things you've done in my life. But until then, till you get filled, we're just going to have to kill some time. So we'll just do some sin-killing preaching. Amen? Because you don't want no glory, man. I got plenty of glory, man. So I looked over here and I said, ooh, I could preach this one and we'd shout it out. And I, we could preach this one over here and we'd shout it out. I had some good stuff in here. I, I mean, but Jeff, I, I, no, I better not show you. you you'll preach my stuff, amen? Amen. And, and, and so, I, and, but you dead. you a bunch of dead Baptists. I can't even get a, a, no, I'm not, amen. I can't even get a, I can't even get you mad at me, amen. I, I can't do nothing. Are you alive? Maybe I need to go check pulse. Amen. I mean, you can't, I can't even get you upset. Are you alive or are you dead? Well, I know you're alive. I know. I seen Brother Jeff. He's alive. Amen. I thank God there's a few saints here that can still get a hold of God. Amen. Amen. I just worry about some of you others. Amen. I'm not looking for a meeting, so uh, amen. <laughs> Psalms chapter 58. Psalms chapter number 58. It's an oldie but goodie. Amen. You say, what do you call this camp meeting message? We is in camp meeting, right? Do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O you sons of men? Who is David talking to? Come on, somebody tell me, because I, I, I want my, my church replies back to me. Amen. Who is David talking to? He's talking to to the church, is he not? Right? So what does he ask him? Do you speak right? The words that come out of your mouth, amen, is that keeping under the cover of the preachers coming by? Do you speak, amen, do you tell dirty jokes at the office? Do you speak righteousness, O congregation? 
Do you cuss? Amen. Yeah. We're getting more quiet. That's all right. Amen. Tomorrow morning we'll shout. Amen. Amen. Somebody else get up here. Amen. Y'all going to need some glory preaching. I can tell you that now. Amen. But we may need some more sin killing preaching first. Amen. Do you judge up rightly? Judge. Judge what? Well, I guess you ought to judge yourself. I guess you ought to judge your family. I guess you ought to judge, are you doing right? Well, are you? David's asking the church, well, are you, are you judging yourself? Amen. Amen. Did you come in here looking for God, or did you just come here because it's camp meeting and they're going to feed you? And you're looking for a free lunch. Is some of you preachers here just looking for a love offering? Is that what it is? Hallelujah. Ha amen. I paid for my own plane ticket. Hey, amen. I put my own offering in there. Hallelujah. Hey, amen. You want to know how much I put? I, you can come and ask me. Hey, amen. And, and, and if I do get a love offering, if, amen, some place I'm so good, they, won't even, they, they don't even remember. Hey, amen. Uh, hey, amen. It's still, I still won't make any money. I, I didn't come up here to make money. Did you come here to make money? To get fed? To get another meeting? Is that why you're here? Is that why you're here? Huh, preacher? Is that what it is? You're here for uh, a meeting? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, in heart. Now, who is David talking to? The church. Remember that now. Ye in heart you work wickedness. You weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. He talking to the church. He's some of this, some of y'all working wickedness. You got your pretty little old dress on and you got your little old suit on, but you's a wicked devil. Ain't that what David said? I told you I'm hitting the old stuff, amen. He hit the New Testament, I'm hitting the Old Testament. We reversing, amen. I was supposed to go first, he was supposed to go second, amen. But we, du we double dipping, amen. amen. Who are you talking to? Talking to church. Amen. He said, y'all wicked. There's some of y'all just plain wicked. Only reason you're here is to see whose skirt I might be able to see up. You didn't like that at all. I can tell that already. Good. I'm getting you mad. Amen. That's what. That's my whole intention. Amen. Get you red hot mad at sin because you're doing it. You're working wickedness. Amen. You weigh the violence in your hands of the Lord. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they're born, speaking lies. Who's he talking about? The church children? Is that who is he talking about? Is he talking about the kids in the church? It. Come on now, somebody say amen, but I ain't going to go any further until somebody says amen. amen. I got plenty of time. I got three hours. Hallelujah. Amen. I got all the time in the world. This person is like the person of a serpent. He's telling that the kids are acting like snakes. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charmers never so wisely. Young people, young people, listen to me. If you got a pastor, that Bible says that there's some of you 
that a snake charmer can't even get you to do right. But you want your pastor to do the miracle work. Hey, if the, if the snake charmer can't do his job, amen, how's the pastor going to do his job? How's the dad going to... I mean, you're talking about rotten kids. There are some teenagers that are sitting right here that are thinking about one thing and one thing only. I just can't wait to get out of my mama and daddy's house. So we're going to join the army. We're not going to have nobody tell us what to do. <laughs> right. We're going to get married. Never have nobody tell us what to do. Uh-huh. Have four kids. And they're going to beat you. Get drunk. Then they're going to Oh, God. Should, I don't know if you can handle it, but it don't really make a difference. Then they're going to abuse your children. We do live in 2014, right? Am I lying or am I not lying? Hey, man, some of you girls are going to get married just to get out of mom and dad's house. Hey, man, you're going to get married to some drunk or some dope head. He's going to wind up having some kids, and then he's going to get a man in his own little old world, and he's going to wind up wanting to abuse your children because you're a snake. You need to get saved. You need to get born again. Snake charmer can't even. Hey, man, they can't even get you to calm down. That's pretty bad when, when, when the, the preacher tells, tells uh, amen, the congregation, amen, and the, y'all kids act like a bunch of snakes and we can't even get a, cha- a snake a charmer in there to straighten you out. You won't listen. You won't pay attention. Amen. Can I give you a story? Don't matter, I'm going to tell you anyway. I know a little girl, she wanted to be a missionary, you know, wife, and going to go to missionary training, and marry a missionary. And then the hormones kick in, you know. You know how them hormones kick in? She, but she wants to marry an independent fundamental Baptist. But she can't say no to the guy that doesn't want to do nothing. You know what you're supposed to do if you're called of God, young man, young lady? I know some of y'all been called to God, amen. Don't, don't get me started on that one, amen. But you're not going to wait because them hormones are going to kick in and she looks good. Alan Jones says when a young man and a young girl hold hands, again, I, I didn't say it, Alan Jones said it, amen, so don't get mad at me, amen. Please somebody say amen, amen. Uh, Amen. Alan Jones says uh, uh, that little girl thinks it's so cute and that little boy thinks he's having sex. Amen. I said, I said y'all wouldn't like that. Amen. It is the truth. So what did she do? She got married. Got married. After four years of school, Married independent fundamental Baptist in the church. They started getting out of church slowly. Started, stopped tithing, stopped reading their Bible, stopped giving, stopped attending church, stopped all the activities that they were all in at the beginning. Have you ever noticed that? They're in everything. You know why they're in everything? So they can see each other. Amen. Why don't you figure it out, Mom and Dad? Amen. But you're too lazy, amen, because you done worked all week, amen. You ain't going to go with them soul winning. You're going to let them sit in the back of the bus by themselves. Oh, I better keep going, amen. I better keep going, amen. So he turns around, this young man, independent fundamental Baptist, six years, you know. Mom and dad have been going to church all the time. 
She was supposed to say no because he was not a missionary. She promised God she wanted to do something for God. Now, that's a girl. I think we're in the last days, so uh, I see a lot of young ladies come and ask for support in my church. And you know what I say? Hey, man, can't get no, no man. Hey, man, let me go ahead and get a girl. At least I can help support her. Hey, man, you don't like it? Too bad. Hey, man. Some of you boys won't stand up. You won't be men. You won't be men of God. Price is too high. My own kids told me one time, they said, Daddy, you know, I appreciate you being pastor for 14 years, but we don't want what you want, what you got. Cost you too much. We've seen all of the horrors, and we've seen you stabbed in the back, and we've seen you crying. We've seen you trying. We've seen all that. We, we know it's hard. And we don't want it. So she married that guy, and they got out of church. He had an affair. Called me, you know, because I used to pastor him. I said, well, have you talked to your pastor? Well, he doesn't want me to. I said, well, how long ago was this? Six months ago. Six months ago? What do you do, preacher? What does a pastor do after six months have gone by? You know who's the last to know about the snakes in the church? It's us, the pastors. We're the last ones. Everybody else knows. So she keeps going to church. She starts going back. But she's ostracized because nobody knows how to deal with someone whose husband has committed adultery. We independent fundamental Baptists shoot our own wounded. You didn't have the church discipline her. She left. She said, nobody will talk to me. Nobody will fellowship with me. What else am I supposed to do? I said, find the best independent fundamental Baptist church you can. As far as I know, she's out. Just like some of you snaky children are going to be one day. You're going to be out. You're going to be out because you're going to let your hormones, amen, take control of your life instead of God. Don't you remember the promises and then when God spoke to your heart and said, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to become. I want you to be a missionary's wife. I want you to be a missionary. I want you to be a preacher. I want you to go to beyond, amen, take the gospel beyond. Don't you remember them days? But now your hormones are only on that little teenager. You done forgot about all them promises you made. And ain't nobody going to stop you because you're a snake. Are we having a good time yet? So David says, I like this. This is church discipline in the Old Testament. Break their teeth, O God. Who's he talking to? Remember now, this is a congregation, right? right. Talking about church, church discipline now. Right. It's old time now. Amen. We don't, do, we don't do that now. Amen. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Let them melt away as water which run continually. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrow, let them be as cut in pieces. 
He said, God, I tell you what they need. We just need, uh, I just need you to bust up a couple of them uh, young people and just whack them. Some of you, amen, the only way that your life will be saved from the world and from AIDS is for you to wind up having a wreck and disfiguring you. You didn't like that at all, did you? Cripple is some of you if you have to. You didn't like that either. At least get mad, amen? It'd be better to be in the will of God, amen, with a busted mouth full of teeth. Hallelujah. At least you're in the will of God. At least you've learned. Amen. Oh, uh, you know, I can't eat steak no more, but praise God, I'm in the will of God again. Hallelujah. Amen. That's Old Testament church discipline. Bust them in the mouth. Bust all their teeth out. Let them melt away as water which runneth continually when he bendeth his bow and shoot his arrow. Let them be as cut in pieces as snails which melteth away. Every one of them pass away like the untimely birth of the woman that they may not see the sun. He said, that's what I want. He said, some of these snakes being born, their parents don't even pray for this baby that God will fill their, their child. Some of you ladies are pregnant, amen. Have babies, you don't pray over them at night. You don't go to that nursery and put your hand on them. Daddy, you don't go over there, put your hand on that crib and put your hand on that baby and say, God, would you please, Lord, uh, do something uh, for, for my child and God that he'd get close to you and God, he'd never leave the house of God and God, would you please follow? Oh, no, no, you got to get sleep because you got to go to work, amen? You, you ain't got time to pray. So David said, I tell you what, since you ain't going to pray and they're going to wind up ruining their lives, we just, amen, let them all die. Let them die in the crib. Let them die when they're having their, their babies. Church discipline. Old Testament church discipline. Hey, man, you ain't going to pray for your children? You're not going to pray for your sons and your daughters and your grandchildren? I got one sure. One. Fine. I hope your child then dies. You didn't like that either. Okay, that's fine. Amen. I can see I ain't getting no meetings out of this one. Amen. Before your pots can fill the thorn, he shall take them away as a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. What's he going to do? He's going to take them away. Why? Because you raised them up as snakes. You know what the problem with most Baptist churches is? They're lost. Most of the church members are lost. Hallelujah. Amen. The other half ain't got no Holy Ghost. So David's got a good thing. I like this part. Amen. We're going to have some fun now. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. It says rejoice. Well, we're going to rejoice about it. We're going to rejoice. We're going to we go fix it to shout and praise God. Amen. Because the next verse says, the righteous shall rejoice. What does it say? We gonna rejoice. What are we gonna rejoice about? Oh well, we ain't got there yet. But we're supposed to rejoice. Stand up and shout and praise God. Run the aisle. Why? Because Old Testament, amen, discipline has been done. What's the Old Testament discipline? 
Well, let's keep reading. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Who's he talking to? Church children. The ones that become thieves and murderers and adulterers and fornicators that we put in prison now. Now, I don't know how much blood you need to wash your feet, but the way they tell me, I've never been deer hunting. Now, I have an AK-15. That sucker will shoot 30 rounds. I got shotguns. I got a gun that will shoot four football fields with a telescope, seven rounds. Hit you just like that. I got a 22 long. When I bought the thing, it had a 25 clip banana. I said, you can't kill nobody with 22 long. He said, sir, this is a one football field long. He said, you put that little thing right there on it, that scope. He said, and it's going to shoot whatever you put your little trigger on and no recoil. I had a man come out of prison, and I had all my men come inside the room, and he said, I want to join the church. He said, but my parole officer wants to talk to you. I said, I don't have a problem with that. I said, uh, do you want to know what I did? I said, personally, I don't care. Every man's entitled to a second chance, but I'll tell you this. You ever look at one of my kids? You ever go to the bathroom when one of my kids is there? I'm going to send one of these men, and they're all loaded with a gun, and we're going to shoot you three or four times, and then we're going to wait about an hour, and then we're going to call the cops. And if the cops ain't showing up by then, we're going to take you to the swamp, we're going to dig a hole, and we're going to go, amen. You say, church membership's kind of hard in your church, ain't it, huh? Yeah. I'm willing to give a second chance. Amen. I don't mind. As long as you listen to the rules. At this point, they ain't listening to the rules. They had to be hanged up like a deer. Shot like a deer. Ever go with deer hunting? I don't know how many deer you got to cut your throats to... Wash your feet in blood. But you know what David's saying? I'm going to fill this bucket. First, I'm going to string that guy up and cut his throat and put the bucket there. And then I'm going to go to the next one, church members, and cut his throat and get his blood. Old Testament discipline. Then I'm going to go to the third one. And I don't know how many you got to give, but he's going to get him a bucket full. Amen. Uh, and then he said, I'm going to rejoice and uh, I'm going to wash my feet uh, in the blood. Uh, I'm going to rejoice uh, because they're dead. Uh, they're not troubling anybody anymore. They don't want to get saved. They don't want to go to church. Fine. Let them go to hell. My lovely Lord Jesus Christ, it's in the book of Revelations. He said that Satan's going to be down there when he finally gets ready. He's going to be tortured in the presence of the Lamb. You know what the Lamb's going to do? He's going to rejoice. He's going to rejoice. See, we're going to get a new glorified body. Right now, some of y'all are getting queasy. I can see that already. Amen. But uh, one day, the Lord's going to allow Satan to be tortured, and he's going to enjoy himself. So I've asked God, amen, when I get to heaven, I want a fireproof helicopter with a couple of Patriot missiles, amen, uh, many machine guns, uh, uh, amen, uh, 
uh, that can see at night, and I want to drive, I want to fly into hell. I've seen Jeff drive, so he can have to fly the helicopter. Amen. And every time I see a child molester, amen, I'm going to say, there's one right there. Amen. Lock on him. Amen. And turn on the music. I want all these speakers uh, on the helicopter. Amen. And, and then we're going to turn on that music. You say, what are you going to play? I'm on the highway to heaven. Uh, I'm on the highway to heaven. Uh, I'm on the highway to heaven. Uh, I'm on the highway to heaven. Amen. Uh, oh, I want to have me some fun. Lord, have fun. Amen. I want to have some fun. Amen. Y'all just want to kiss Jesus' feet. Amen. All day. I want to fly in the helicopter. Amen. <laughs> There's a bunch of them hanging out over there. We can't kill them. Amen. But drop the nuke. And keep the music loud. I'm on the highway to heaven. I'm on the highway to heaven. I'm on the highway to heaven. I'm on the highway. Joyce over there. <laughs> Y'all so dead, amen. <coughs> Old Testament discipline. Old Testament. I got one more verse. I'm still thinking about my helicopter. He's a pedophile and just standing there, he's a well disciplined pedophile. Shoot him anyway. <laughs> if he runs, I know he's a pedophile. Shoot him anyway. Because <laughs> they're all in hell anyway. Amen. I can't kill him anyway. Amen. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. But I want to know, uh, I'm going to torture you just a little bit more. Amen. Uh, and there was a road to heaven called Calvary. Amen. And you were too stupid, uh, amen, to get on that road. Uh, you were too dumb, uh, amen, to ask Jesus Christ uh, how to save you with a precious blood. Every once in a while, I'll look at Jeff and say, should we take it out for a little spin? <laughs> I think that'd be nice. You want to go, Daryl? <laughs> well, if David can rejoice over somebody's blood in a bucket, and Jesus can rejoice over Satan being tortured in hell... Why can't I rejoice in my helicopter? Amen. Y'all didn't like that at all. I can see that already. Amen. Y'all didn't like that one bit. But that's Old Testament discipline. When it gets to the point that there, there's nothing we can do, we're going to string you up. I don't know, alive or dead. I don't know if David's praying, saying, now listen, this is your last chance. You better get right with God. I'm fixing to cut your throat. And when I got enough blood in that bucket, I'm going to shout her out. And I'm going to wash my feet in the blood. Your blood. Can I say this as a, as a pastor? I don't want to wash my feet in nobody's blood. I want to see people get saved. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Some people that are going to hell, hey, man, those are my family members, my friends, my neighbors. Hey, man. 
I don't want to say I got in an emergency room with my dad. He was 82, and I got him in there and couldn't breathe again. And so I started screaming. Help! Help! My dad can't breathe! Help! Help! My dad can't breathe! Help! Help! Please! My dad can't breathe! Five nurses came out. Help my daddy. Put that tube in there. Turn on that air. That's why we're having camp meeting. Because somebody's going to die. And they're going to get church discipline. I don't know what kind. They don't get saved. And it's our job to get a hold of God. I don't want to stand before God and say, I didn't pray enough. I said, bump them, baby, bump them. Daddy's got full coverage on this car. You, you turn on the light. You, you honk that horn. You do whatever you got to do. You take my daddy to the doctor. I said, he can't breathe. Do whatever you got to do. I'll pay for it. Whatever the cost is. Pass the cars. Disobedient child wouldn't bump that car. But she did good. She had 120 on the freeway. We made it in 15 minutes. It was supposed to take an hour. We made it. Some of you done gave up. You done gave up. You done quit. So God's going to have to have discipline on them. You see all these kids and teenagers? They don't get right with God. They don't get somebody to start praying for them. Somebody start interceding for them. They're going to wind up with discipline. So that a man shall say, Verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judges in the earth. God doesn't want anybody to go to hell, for God so loved the world that he gave his son. gave his son and his son's blood he turned his back on his son so his son could become sin there's somebody lost here tonight I know there's somebody lost I can feel it and there's somebody here you've stopped praying for your children you stop praying for that teenager because you just can't train her anymore. She won't listen to you anymore. You, can you stop praying for that young man? Amen, that boy, because he won't listen to you anymore. Some of y'all got babies in the nursery. And you're not even praying for them. And they're going to live in this world and you're not even praying for them every day. And we hear about kids getting in Houston. We hear about kids getting picked up and taken every day, every day. They run away to the big city. And the only hope that they have is the church. And that's us. Miss Andy, would you sing something? Would you come and sing? Let's all stand, preacher. It's all yours. Heard the message. Here's the altar.